This lecture provides uh, calculation examples for introductory geophysics. So I hope when you get through the questions, you'll get to learn something as far as uh, this aspect of geophysics is concerned. Now let's get to the first question. A geosection at a depth of 1.2 kilometers from the land surface has an average density of 2.7 uh, megagrams per cubic meter. Calculate the value of the Boga correction that must be made on any gravity value measured at the surface. So this is basically a question trying to ask us to do a correction on gravity measurement. Uh, so we want to take one of the example questions so that we can see the process or th how significant this kind of correction is, con uh, is is to what we call geophysical uh, survey or gravity measurement. Now let's get to the question itself. You are told that we are talking about uh, a geosection at a depth of 1.2 kilometers. So H here or what other books call Z is 1.2 kilometers which needs to be converted into meters that is 1 point, one, 1,200 meters sorry so the density is 2.7 megagrams per cubic meter that is the general density of the geosection or the, the, the crustal body now this correction is theoretically given as 2 pi g rho h you know this g is a, a constant pi is a constant and 2 is also a constant putting this together we can simplify this formula to 0 0.4191 rho h where this is density and this is the depth we were talking about so you quickly substitute these values but remember the formula is valid when we are talking about this density as megagrams per cubic meter so that should be put into consideration never to mess up uh, the correction process so this actually will be 0 0.4191 times 2.7 as it is uh, and times 1200 meters and this will be in gravity units so this equals to 1357.884 gravity units but one milligal which is the common uh, unit used in doing this gravity uh, measurement one milligal is equivalent to 10 gravity units so you want to convert this into milligals and we will have the 1357.884 divided by 10 to give us 135.7884 milligals and this value is supposed to be subtracted from what is measured from the surface question 2 the travel time of a refracted seismic wave upon reaching an observation point located 20 meters from the short point is 10.2 seconds. If the reflector is a basement, which is the second layer of a two-layer geosection, and the velocity of the wave in the first layer is 240 meters per second, at what depth is the basement? So in other words, we are looking for Z or H for the depth having put in our mind that we are talking about a short point and an observation point where we have geophones so that distance is given as 20 meters and we are told that the travel time t is 10.2 seconds and uh, the velocity on the upper layer just before you get to the basement is 240 meters per second so you want to apply some theoretical formula that is used to get to relate travel time with velocities and depths. So in this case we are talking about t which is travel time as 10.2 seconds, x which is the distance between the short point and the observation point on the horizontal surface, that is horizontal distance 20 meters, and v1 as the velocity in the upper layer, it's the layer just before you get to the basement that is 240 meters per second, z is the depth here. So we bring in the formula t squared is equal to x squared over v1 squared plus 4z squared over v1 squared. This again can be derived theoretically and if you get if you go back to your notes 
on seismics and, uh, and, and travel times, you will find this formula or you will see how it is derived. So we go to the, uh, we just substitute the values into this formula. So we have t squared is actually 10.2 squared is equal to the x of 20 squared over 240 squared plus 4z squared, z is what we want for is a constant over 240 squared. So this actually results into 104.04 .04 is equal to 400 over 557,600 and plus 4z squared over this. So this value actually is common. So we can bring this side so that we, want, we have 104.04 .04, uh, times 57600 minus 400 because that's what will remain this other side. Then we equate this to 4z squared. The result here is going to be divided by 4 and then we find the square root and we'll end up with approximately 1.2 kilometers or to be exact we are talking about 1223.96 meters below the surface. So you can see how we can use these travel times and velocities to locate where we have formations into the interior of the earth. Question 3 a section of uh, the earth crust originally measured to stretch uh, to a stretch of 1,372.5 meters was remeasured after several years and found to be 1,373.2 meters. So this is an increment in length due to forces responsible for the earth movement. This again is uh, part of what we uh, studied under elementary geophysics or geology where we talk about earth movements responsible for the formations uh, where we have which we have in the earth's interior or even on the surface of the earth so uh, our interest here is a change in stretch or length of a section. so there's aspect of strain because when you change forcefully change the uh, stretch or the the length or dimension of a given section the whole G section is uh, subjected to some strain so we are told to calculate this strain and uh, we want to use the simple uh, formula for determination or determining strain original length is that new length is this so we want to think of the extension what is this change so we'll have 1373.2 minus 1372.2 Five and that gives us 0 0.7 meters. This is a very, uh, this is not uh, a big length, but uh, you can see we have talked about several years. You may not notice this, but it may abruptly occur depending on which force is responsible, or slowly occur depending on the kind of earth movements we have. So strain is actually extension over the original length. So we'll simply divide 0 0.7 over what we had as 1,372. 0.5 and that will give us 5.1 times 10 raised to the power negative 4. We don't have units because this is a ratio. Question 4. The ratio of the vertical component to horizontal component of magnetic field at a point is 0 0.53. So we are comparing horizontal component and vertical components. So magnetic fields have components. That is from the theoretical work and you can remember that. If the value of the horizontal component is 23,000 nanoteslas, calculate the value of the total field. The total field is normally represented by vector B. So how do we arrive at the total field given that we can conveniently obtain the vertical component and the horizontal component? So this is achieved like this. There are two methods you can apply or two relations that you can apply to find this. So first of all, you're given as H, which is a horizontal component, as 23,000 nanoteslas. Uh, so we have uh, Z over H, which is the ratio, is 0 0.53. So what is B, uh, the magnitude of uh, total field? So we have some relations here which we need to use. We know that H is equal to B magnitude cos I, and this I is inclination angle. And this angle can be obtained by the actan of Z over H. So we have Z over H already as 0 
so that means I can be obtained so tan inverse of that gives us 27.92 degrees so when we have already obtained this value we need to get back to a relation that compares H with B and I so for us to find B it will be H over cos I so let's go do that H over cos I gives us this and the result is 26,030.7 nanoteslas. These calculations are not very complex. Uh, what they help us with is simply to remind us of the kind of principles we have in elements of geophysics and generally uh, geology and geological studies. Now question 5. In the analysis of fault system section the head okay and the through were measured to be 127 degrees and uh, 12 meters respectively determine the horizontal offset what we call the heave maybe from the answer you'll try to know the what we are referring to as head through but from your theory again that is also clearly given so in trying to solve this this is actually what we are calling the head this angle here okay then the through is the oh, vertical displacement that is experienced during the fault uh, process or the faulting process so we have this angle and we're also given this value and the question wants us to determine the heave the heave is actually horizontal offset which is this H here so we want to find that and this is basically now geometry we forget about faulting and we get to geometry and solve this so head which is alpha is 127 degrees through t 12 meters what is h now we need to now find this angle here which is basically obtained from the difference between this and 180 because the total angle here along a straight line is 180 so what we call the deep angle deep angle is given by 180 minus the head Okay, so that we have find 53 now if you look if you find this angle as 53 and you have T then we can get H by trigonometric relation so tan of this is equal to T over H so H is actually T over tan, theta, uh, tan phi so when you have this uh, is equal to 12 meters over tan 53 and that gives us 9.04 meters this is actually the value of h so those are some good questions that uh, we were to learn and that simply means we have others which will come later and this is uh, for part one you can subscribe and get more thank you